today's video, I'm talking all about knitting socks. The Handmade Sock Society Season 4 collection is being released this week as single individual patterns. And so I thought I would share with you a little bit more detail about each sock in the collection. Hello knitters, I'm Helen. And on this channel, I talk about knitting, crafting, and leading a happy and creative life. The Handmade Sock Society is a subscription collection of six sock knitting patterns. And they're released one per month over the course of the year. And so we have released all of them now for this uh, latest collection, which is season four and finished the knit alongs for each of the individual socks and we also had a grand prize for the people who had knit either five or six pairs of the socks from the collection and so we just drew winners for that knit along the grand prize and we decided to draw three prizes because there were so many wonderful entries. Uh, so many people had knit all six socks and quite a few had knit five. And so we thought we would um, offer three prizes of a $50, uh, 50 US dollar voucher for a yarn store or indie dyer of your choice. And so I'll just uh, read out the three winners here. I've got them written down. So the first winner was post number 18, who is Camelot, or um, K-A-A-M-E-L-O-T. The second winner is post number 55, Martha 24 Jane, Martha 24 Jane. And post number 29 is Dragonflower. So congratulations to all the winners. I'll be also putting uh, the winners in my regular newsletter, my weekly newsletter at Curious Handmade. If you'd like to sign up for that, please do. It's at curioushandmade.com. You can find sign up details for the newsletter. And so now I'll just show you each of the sock patterns in the collection. Uh, the first one, I don't have the sample with me. The sample is still on holidays in the UK, but I will um, insert a picture. So the first uh, design was the curling mist socks, and I knit those in cashmere sock yarn from the wool barn. And this is one of my absolute favorite sock yarns to knit with. So this yarn is 80% merino, 10% cashmere and 10% nylon and it's 349 meters per 100 grams so that means that it's a little bit um, plumper and squishier than some sock yarns and it just makes it so beautiful to knit with. So these socks have a tiny little cable going down the leg and across the foot and this uh yeah this design was really inspired by the image of mist curling up through eucalyptus trees in an australian forest all the socks in this collection have a heel flap and gusset type construction for the heel uh, and these ones have a wedge toe and of course you can substitute any heel and toe that you prefer in any of these designs. So the second socks in the collection are the picnic blanket socks. And these are uh, just a fairly simple design. And they were inspired by a picnic blanket or sort of more of a tablecloth really, that my mum always used to bring on picnics and lay out. And it was a, a gingham seersucker. So you can see the beautiful little seersucker effect here on the leg. And I also did a contrasting heel and toe for these, for these socks. Um, of course, you can just do them all in one color if you prefer. And I did that because I had this gorgeous uh, set from Loom Yarn 
and it was called the Loom Hand Dyed Simple Sock Set. <laughs> and it's a 75% uh, superwash merino, 25% nylon blend. And the set is called Antiquity from Loom Yarns, uh, who is a wonderful indie dyer in the UK that I discovered through my amazing sample knitter, Tink Hickman. I was asking her who her favorite indie dyers are in the moment and she suggested Loom Yarn. Um, Deb always is has her finger on the pulse for beautiful indie dyers and other beautiful artisans. These are maybe the easiest socks in the collection. Um, it's a very simple pattern to create because it's uh, just a round of increases and um, then a few just rounds of knitting plain stockinette and then you decrease back in to get this lovely ruched effect. Um, we also knit a sample in the amazing Amble yarn from the Fibre Company. So you can see these here and these are also a, um, a sock blend that is a little bit um, heavier in, in weight um, than a typical fingering or sock weight yarn, I would say. Um, you might be able to see it's a little bit um, squishier <laughs> than, uh, than the other pairs. Um, but these, are, oh, they just feel so nice. Beautiful yarn. I love this Amble um, blend from the Fibre Company. It's just gorgeous. So uh, yeah, we did a, a second sample in these. Um, and uh, yes, I think I'm going to give these as a gift to a family member for Christmas, possibly, or, or a birthday coming up. So the third socks in the collection are the Wild Bees socks, and they have a panel of lace going down the front. The lace goes down the front of the sock and they have um, an eye of partridge heel. Uh, which is very simple to create, but I like the, the textured look that gives. Um, and this yarn is from Lay Family Yarn, uh, another amazing UK indie dyer, uh, Kelly Lay and her family. And this colorway is called Tiger's Eye. And I was looking around for um, a beautiful golden honey color um, because I had the the idea of the lace pattern, I knew the design I wanted to do, and uh, then I wanted to find the perfect yarn for it. And I saw this colorway on Kelly's um, Instagram a while ago and, uh, and just uh, contacted her immediately and said, do you have some of that in stock? <laughs> um, so that worked out beautifully, a lovely, lovely collaboration. How just, how gorgeous is that colorway? Oh. I just love it so much. Even if you're not a, a yellow fan, I think you might even like this colorway. <laughs> oh, it's just beautiful. So this is maybe one of the more intricate um, patterns in the collection. I think that if you are an adventurous beginner or intermediate, you can handle this uh, lace pretty easily. I think knitting lace in the round is probably easier than back and forth. Um, you can read your knitting as you go. And um, I think it's it's not too difficult a pattern. I think it looks more complicated than it is. Um, and uh, yeah, so don't be intimidated. Give it a try. I love these ones. I think, I don't know, it's hard to pick a favorite, but these are one of my favorites in the collection, I think. They're so pretty and I love I love the bee motif. <laughs> so for the fourth socks in the collection, uh, they are the Spinifex socks. And um, if you know my designs, you'll know that I love the star stitch. So I've used the star stitch in this pattern, but it's on a background of um, garter stitch. So it doesn't pop out quite as much. And uh, one of my knitters, Sue, um, said that she had discovered that if instead of doing the garter stitch across the top of the three stitches 
after you've done the star if you um, do stockinette instead if you do knit stitches um, then they will pop out more and that that is that is true and um, I might even revise the pattern to put that detail in because um, yeah I think it could look good with this with the little spin effects um, spin effects stems popping out a little bit more um, so yeah I think I like the subtle look of of the way it is here but um, yes if you want them to pop out a bit more you could do that and I'll I think I'll update the pattern soon to put a note about that and the main thing for these ones is that I decided to um, try a toe up pattern in the collection and I had a lot of help from my friend Anna from Yarnasti. Anna's in Sweden and she's an amazing sock designer and knitter and so she um, she normally knits her socks toe up and so I asked her to help me write a toe up sock pattern for these ones um, so thank you so much Anna and yeah I think for these um, designs I was trying to incorporate some new techniques um, here and there not for all of them um, because it's that kind of year that we can't cope with too much change and too much newness I think but I thought I'll just pop in a few um, a few new techniques so these are kind of like the the new um, ones if you're feeling up to a bit of experimenting and if you're not you can also um, use uh, one of the other patterns like the wild bee socks as a sort of a template and just do the normal top down and put the panel on the front um, and just knit them if you're a if you're a top down sock knitter you can still knit these top down um, it would just mean that the spin effects is is growing down <laughs> towards the ground rather than up I think that was part of the reason I decided to do these toe, um, toe up as well so that the spinifex um, plants would be growing up rather than down <laughs> but I don't think it matters I don't think anyone who saw you wearing spinifex socks would really be paying too much attention to which way <laughs> the the pattern's going so the fifth socks are the lavender field socks. These are also knit in the wool barn cashmere sock blend, my favorite sock yarn. Uh, the colorway is misty mauve. So gorgeous, gorgeous colorway. Just so calming and relaxing, um, just like lavender is for me. And again, I experimented a little bit with these ones and decided to cast on with a Pico cast on. Um, if you don't fancy doing that, you can just do a plain rib. Um, they are, it does make them a little bit um, less body, less clinging to your legs. So they, they might flop out a little bit more. Um, when I find that when they're on my <laughs> ankles, <laughs> they're quite firm. Um, but uh, yes, it's your knitting. You're in charge of your, your socks. So just knit the cuff however you like. Um, I had a few comments of people that didn't prefer to do the picos. And that's absolutely fine. Um, but I thought it was a cute little design feature for a change. And then we have... Um, this lovely little simple lace pattern that's the same as I used in the Lavender Fields shawl from the Shawl Society. So I um, have some of the um, designs in the Handmade Sock Society are mirrored in the Shawl Society such as the Wild Bees and the Lavender Fields, um, some of them but not all of them. The Curling Mists were also um, matchy matchy between the two collections. So for the sixth socks in the collection we have the Scribbly Gum socks. So this particular base is um, Louis and Lola Merino Nylon sock and this is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 
um, and yeah, just has a lovely twist to it and gives lovely definition to the pattern. And they also have a panel running down the front of the socks. So I think that this is a, a really pretty little pattern. It's not too complicated. It's only, I think it's a four row repeat for this lace pattern. And you can see the beautiful speckles in the yarn on the plain stockinette back. This yarn is the Joy colorway from Louie and Lola. And this was another one where I had the idea for the socks and was looking around for the perfect yarn for it. And Karina had posted this uh, Joy colorway on her Instagram and I immediately uh, messaged her and said, um, I think that would be absolutely perfect for these socks. So these were the ones most recently released and we've just, yeah, we've just finished the knit along for these last socks in the collection. So I always feel a little bit wistful when the collection finishes and the last pattern is released uh, for a season, but um, yeah, it's also quite exciting to have been able to share all the designs that I've been hiding away all that time. So I hope you've enjoyed that little tour of the Handmade Sock Society season four. I've really enjoyed sharing a little bit of my inspiration and a bit about the collection with you. And as I said in the intro, you can now purchase the patterns individually if you didn't I uh, want the whole collection, you can just get each each pattern by itself and I will have that available on both Ravelry and my Gumroad shop. So you can find links for that in the description below. And if you'd like to listen to more about why I love knitting socks, there is a recent video you can watch here. <laughs> have a great week, I'll talk to you soon.